Okay, so when you think about the operations of math, anything in math is just glorified counting. That's how math began, is just counting. So what happens when you count? So when you're counting, you're like counting two and then you're counting three more, then what are you actually doing? One, two and then three more. Three. What is that? That's addition. I just I, I don't know why I put six fingers up. But that is one, not two plus three. Plus yes. Another one. Where do you, I'm wondering, where should we, uh, should we just like leave them at home, the papers that we're done with? Like the, when we yep. So those things. are, if you've submitted them online, then you're done. Okay. okay. You throw them away, right? Yes. Um, I wouldn't throw them away just in case something happens, the internet isn't working or whatever, or I lose one of your submissions. But we don't need to keep them so, in your book. You don't need to keep bring them with you or keep them in your book. You can leave them in a special place at home. At the end of the semester, you can trash them if you want, or you can put them on your refrigerator and just say, hey, I did all this. You can do that if you want, okay? Lesson four, well, we're gonna talk about multiplication. Well, multiplication, if addition is just glorified counting, like fast counting, multiplication is like fast addition, shortcut addition. If multiplication is just like a three times five, that's just adding three five times faster. or adding five three times. Now, when you multiply three times five, well, some of you might be doing this. Are you going five, 10, 15? No. Or do you just know that three times five is 15? Yeah, because yeah, most of you are at least familiar with your multiplication chart. So you know that three times five is 15 without having to count it out or add it out, right? So you will realize that multiplication is going to be easier for you than addition okay because remember those addition problems that we just did and subtraction yeah. that was kind of difficult but multiplication we have those things memorized okay so uh, multiplication is just shortcut addition So seven times 12 is you're adding seven 12 times or you're adding 12 seven times. It means the same thing. Okay, so adding seven, seven times 12. So this is reversible. Do you remember what that property is called when you can reverse something? Uh, a reverse whatever it's called. Uh, why did I just forget that? Inverse uh, operations? Uh, not inverse. Like, that's like know. multiplication and division or inverse operations. It but it starts with the C. I don't know if we talked about oh, it yet community? this year. Commutative. That's right. Let's go. Community. So multiplication community. is commutative. 
Okay. Because you can switch. Okay. Communism is kind of similar. Like everything's the same, right? <laughs> Never mind. We're not talking about communism. Okay, so when you're multiplying, um, do you have to line up like addition? Do you have to line up by the decimal? No, you're, you're going to write justify. So you're going to go 12 times 7. So basically you're multiplying uh, the 7 times the, the 2. And you're multiplying the 7 times the 10. So if you think about it, um, you guys, are, it's adding 7 12 times. So you're adding 7 2 times, and then you're adding it 10 more times. That's what you're doing. Okay? So you guys know this, right? 2 times 7 is 14. Carry the 1. It's multiply 84. 1 times 7 and then add the 1. So it's 8. So 84. When you do that with decimals, what happens when you multiply with decimals? Um, you the universe explodes. You have to put how many of uh, how oh, many, however many numbers are to the right of yes. the decimal. Yes, good job. So we're I'm not going to get there yet, but right now we are just, oh, if there's just the decimal in one of the numbers, then that's an easy answer. We know that the answer is going to go over two places, and that's where the decimal is going to be. Or if you want to do it this way, yeah, there's two places there, there's zero places there. So that means there's going to be two places in the answer. But don't worry about the decimal. When you're multiplying, just multiply normally. Nine times nine, 81, carry the eight. Nine times seven is 63, plus eight is 71. So one and a seven. So see how I'm ignoring the decimal? I don't have to worry about it. Don't bring it down, worry about it later. Nine times five is 45, plus seven is 52. So this one, there's no other number to carry, so just write it out, 52. And why do we put a zero there? So that, uh value? Yeah, because really, you know what we're doing? We're not multiplying um, 5.79 times 2. We're multiplying by 20, right? So the shortcut to multiplying by 10 or a multiple of 10 is multi and when you multiply by 20, you just multiply yeah. by 2 and then throw on a 0. That's yeah. what we're doing there, okay? So 2 times 9, 18. Carry the 1. I'm going to cross those out. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, carry the 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So those all line up, keep them nice and neat. Now we add them together because really, remember, we're just adding 9 of these, which is that number, plus 20 of those, which is that number, all together. Yes, did I make a mistake? No, I got the answer. Okay, what do you got? Uh, you know what, Austin? $53.69. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I got. What? <laughs> so here's what I see what you did. You, uh, I think you didn't put that zero there. You didn't put that placeholder there. So, and it would have been $63 and um, 69 cents. But this is it. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to ish this again. This is about six bucks, right? Is this about six bucks? Yeah. This is times 30. What's six times 30? Uh, 300. Nine. Wait, what's six times three? Six times three. 18. 18. So, so what's six times 30? 180. Is that is that close to 180 ish? Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. if I would now that when I ish it, that means I'm gonna I'm really seeing if I put the decimal in the right place. Because it's a lot closer to one, this is a, 167 is a lot closer to 180 than 16.7 or 1,679, right? So that when you ish this problem, when you're done, you're just seeing if it, you got put the decimal in the right place, okay? All right, so far so good. You guys remember multiplication? I know it's been a while. Yes, sir. All right, again, yes. this is the reason why you have to survive this semester. This semester, we're doing final checks on whether you know how to multiply, divide, add, and subtract. Okay? I believe you do, but we're gonna, you're going to prove it this semester. And then next semester, we can use a calculator. Divide yes? How many tests are we going to have throughout the semester? Um, no more than five or six. Okay. okay? And they're all going to be take-home tests. All right. There's no in-class tests. Okay? All right. What comes after multiplication? Division. division. All right, let's do some division. Anybody know the, first of all, anybody know the parts of a multiplication problem? The 
the dividend and the divisor. That's, that's the, you're right on the division. That's right. Division is the factor and answer. Oh. Back. I only have the dividend and division. Factor. No. Dividend divided by the divisor equals the quotient. But if you're ammo, he likes to say quotient. <laughs> That's how the cool kids are saying it, apparently. Okay, um, what are the three parts of a multiplication problem? Yeah, the something, factors. Something. Factor the times There's another factor times equals the, um, the product. Product, nice work. All right. So again, let me ask the same question and see if you can give me a good answer. Why do these have the two same F words? Not those F words. And then these guys, why do those words differ? Because you can reverse. Yes, you can reverse the factors and it doesn't matter. But dividend and divisor, that's how much you're dividing out of the dividend and so on. Okay, good. Yeah, let's leave the chickens out of it. What was that example? Okay, so, so you're basically um, seeing how many groups of something you can take out. For example, 12 divided by four. Um, this can be written like this. And this is how it was normally written, 12 over four. But did we talk about this, where this symbol came from? No. Nope. People, yeah. the oh. mathematicians made this symbol because they, were, they didn't want to write it on two lines. So they put this 12 here, and they made a little diagram of the division problem. See the, the, the top number divided oh, by yeah. the bottom number? And they put a four there. The other way is this, 12 divided by four. Now they, this, you have to read backwards. But do you know where this symbol comes from? Do you guys know how to find the area of a rectangle? Yeah. Uh, it's just length times width, right? Yeah. Yes. So look, see how this forms a rectangle? Yeah. Three that times four no equals sense. 12. Whoa. So this, these are the, just the dimensions oh, of a rectangle. Whoa. That's oh. where that oh, symbol no. comes from. Oh. Isn't that, it's mind blowing, oh. I know. So, oh. yeah. Excuse yeah. me, sir, may I use the restroom? I know, you have to go to the bathroom after that. It's like, <laughs> oh, so exciting, I just peed myself. He didn't, he didn't pee himself. Okay. All right. Are you seriously not? Are you going in the bathroom? Oh, yes. yes. Mask. Good job. Wear a mask. Put my max on. Okay. What else? Is this a computer or something? All right. You guys remember the steps to division? Yes. No. Give me a give me a three digit number. Go. Uh, twenty nine. Wait, no, two hundred ninety. Okay, 290. Give me a one digit number. Go. One, five, five, seven, four. Five. I'm going to go seven. All right, uh, repeat after me. Four. <laughs> I didn't say four. <laughs> Dirty monkey smell bad. Dirty monkey smell bad. All right, what does D stand for? Divide. Divide, so you're dividing the first digit. Does seven go into two? Yes. No. No, no but it goes into 29. Somebody Actually, said four, four times. times. And then what does the M stand for? Multiply. So what are you multiplying? Seven times, uh, seven times four. Yeah, the, basically that quotient of that little problem times the divisor. So four times seven. And then what is smell? What does S stand for? Subtract. Okay, so we're going to subtract. 29 minus 28 is what? One. Okay, then what does the B stand for? Bring down. Bring down. Bring down. Zero. Okay, so bring down that next digit. One. One and zero. So how many times? And then we start over. We start the process again. How many times is seven going to ten? One. One. Then multiply. One times seven is seven. Subtract. Three. Three. Then what do we do with that? We add a zero. zero. We bring down another three zero. On top of seven. So we can do it two. We have two choices here. We have three choices. We can just go remainder three, or we can write do what Michaela said and just write the remainder over the divisor. This is a better way to write your answer. Like, you don't go to the bank and say, can I have three remainder four dollars, please? You don't, well, you don't, they're not just going to give you that anyway. But we don't really have a lot of use for remainder answers in real life. Sometimes we do, but in this case, we don't. Um, or what's the third option, Nathan? 
Well, I was gonna. I was also. You couldn't just bring down zeros, right? So you could add. Yeah, you could zeros. add a decimal, but you can't add zeros without adding the decimal. Yeah, remember? Yeah. yeah. So you add a decimal and you bring it down yes. and then you keep going and eventually you'll get either either it'll either, either stop repeat, repeat or it will repeat. Um, give you a nice or you can round it or something, right? Yeah, you repeat and then round Okay. It and then. So we're going to leave those two options. These are the two options we have so far. We're going to stick with those two options for now. Okay? So multiplication and division are also inverse properties. So remember, multiplying by three and then dividing by three, it's like it never happened, right? Five times three is 15 divided by three, you're back to five. So they undo each other, okay? Yeah, mind blowing, again. So when you have a multiplication problem, for example, 12 times, what does the dot mean? That's multiplication, multiplication in sign language. So how, so how do you find that missing factor in a multiplication problem? What do you always do when you're missing a factor in a multiplication Opposite problem? Divide. You divide. And that, just like addition, when you're missing an add-in, you always subtract. In multiplication, only in multiplication though, but when you're in division, it's that same conundrum, okay? It depends on which one you're missing. So remember, if you're confused, try both. But we're gonna take that 168 and divide by 12. Dirty monkey smell bad. One, 12, four, bring down the eight, goes in exactly. I heard dirty monkey smell bad. Yeah, you missed that. Dirty monkey smell bad. Divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down the next digit. Oh, okay. The algorithm to the steps to dividing. Okay, so remember to ish that. If you would have done another multiplication problem, that would have been a really big number, right? Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't have made sense. But 12 times 14, I could see how that could equal 168. I can more than see it, it's actually the answer. Okay? And again, but again, when you're missing like the division, something in the division problem, it depends on which one you're missing. So try both and see what works. Or you can just remember this is the case. Now here's one. What's 64 over, what does over something mean? Divide. Divide, okay. So how do you find A? How do you find that missing number? I can't see it. You are. 64 over A equals four. You uh, divide the 64 four. Yeah, because if you would have multiplied 64 times four, that's like uh, 256. 64 divided by 256, that's definitely, that's a fraction. That's definitely not four. But let's try dividing. Well, 64 divided by four equals 16. That makes more sense. 64 over 16, that equals four, okay? So if you're ever confused on which one you're supposed to do, try both, okay? Mm. Uh, this, these are things that you don't really have to remember. It'll come naturally eventually if they're not natural already. But just think about it logically. If I divide or if I multiply, what's going to happen? Oh, okay. And again, you can always use a real easy problem. I mean, like, 20, like 24 divided by 6 equals 4. If you're missing that bottom number, cover that 6 and see how you get the 6. Well, you have to divide, okay? Yes, question? So basically, fractions are just division. Right. Yes, fractions are just division problems. Okay? okay.